So we are here together with uh, Thomas uh, Fuglin, yeah. uh, who will give an introduction on uh, on the Electron Wallet and the adaptation to the uh, to the Lightning uh, uh, network. Uh, it's still work in progress, and we're happy to have you here, uh, Thomas. Thank you. Yeah. So so maybe you can explain a little bit about uh, Electron Wallet. I understand it's a big chunk of the uh, current uh, Bitcoin transactions are through the Electron Wallet. At least ten percent. So it's a so it's a, a, a oh, big yeah. wallet in this space. This number is outdated. Uh, we used to have this large amount uh, some years ago, but then uh, I think it's uh, less than five percent today because there has been uh, more usage of web-based wallets. So uh, we don't do. I don't think we do ten percent today anymore. Okay, but the volume of transactions increased a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. So too. a smaller yeah. percentage of a bigger amount is still that's still true. a lot of transactions yeah. Yeah, uh, that's on the Electron wallet. So happy to have you here. Um, so maybe for the audience, what, what is your background, uh, Thomas? How do you come into this space and uh, what made you develop the Electron Wallet in the first place? I was a researcher in computer science at INRIA, so it's a French research institute for computer science. And uh, my background was machine learning, but I always had an interest in decentralized systems. So that's why I was uh, doing research on neural networks, actually but also peer-to-peer -peer networks. And uh, so I, I got to learn about Bitcoin uh, and I was instantly fascinated. It grabbed my attention. And uh, so that was at the end of 2010. And then I started to uh, write small bits of software in order to better understand how Bitcoin works because if you want to understand how something works, you have to play with it. Yeah. Um, and in the summer 2011, I, uh, I decided, I mean, I had enough components to write a, a Bitcoin wallet. And at the same time, there was this uh, massive fraud with uh, mybitcoin.com, yeah. uh, where uh, a lot of users uh, lost Bitcoins because they were using an insecure website. Uh, I mean, uh, they were using a website as a wallet and this website stole their Bitcoins. So I decided that there was a better way to do a wallet that uh, is both uh, user-friendly and also um, secure. So already in 2011, you developed the Electrum wallet? Yeah, the first release of Electrum was November 2011. Okay, yeah. okay. That's yeah. a, you were early uh, at, at the stage, right? So you come a long way in the past uh, years. Yeah, I've been in, yeah, I've been in the ecosystem for a long time. Yeah. I, the time where Electrum was released, there was um, it was one of the first uh, light wallets. Uh, there was a few others, but uh, they were not using the same technology as Electrum. Yeah, yeah, okay. But now, let's say on a Bitcoin platform, we're going to have uh, to see the, the Lightning network. So now you, you're adapting the Electrum wallet to fit into the Lightning network, right? But there, yeah. there are some security issues on that, I understand. That is correct. So I mean, there is always security issues in sure. Bitcoin software. Sure. Uh, that um, We have started to integrate uh, the Lightning protocol in Electrum um, this year. And um, it is still a work in progress. Uh, so uh, we can already send and receive Bitcoins on the, on the Lightning network. But currently, this software is not enabled on the main network. It's only used on the test network of Bitcoin in order yeah. to uh, to protect users sure. uh, because this uh, this is clearly not ready for for mass usage. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, we are. Uh, it's still a work in progress. I expect uh, to have a release maybe at the end of this year, but that's not guaranteed. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, how how big is your team, your development team, working on the, on this to get an um, idea? Yeah. So, uh, Electrum is an open source project, and as such, it has received contribution from hundreds of uh, users all over the world. But we also have a company. I created this company in 2014, uh, and uh, so with this company, I can actually pay some developers. Sure. I have two full-time developers at the moment, plus two other people that are part-time. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. So a core team of yourself and then a community open source yeah. to, to contribute to the code, uh, yes. basically. Yes. And um, are there any other wallets 
which are competing with Electrum in adopting also Lightning uh, technology into the Oh, network. sure. I mean, uh, the Lightning network has been uh, in development for a few years now. And uh, there are um, Lightning network wallets like uh, Neutrino or, um, well, LND is the daemon that goes with Neutrino. There is also the C Lightning version. Uh, there is uh, Async. Uh, there's a few Lightning Networks uh, so wallets in, in development. Yes. So what are the differentiators of Electron Wallet um, yeah. I, the way you see it? What, what, okay. what are the elements why I should select Electron as a wallet? This, compared is, to the other this is a good question. Um, we have... Uh, it's a little bit... Uh, okay, we are trying to, to have the same Electron philosophy that we had when we introduced the Electron client. So uh, we are... Uh, not requiring a full node um, and uh, still trying to maximize the trust that uh, the user can get. Um, the other component is that uh, with the Lightning Network you also need to uh, have an entity that watches your channels unless you can do it yourself. Um, but uh, I do not think that our target users are people who would like to watch their channels all the time. Exactly. So we are going to provide a so-called watchtower uh, service and uh, this is going to be part of the, of the software that uh, we develop. Actually, we are already developing this uh, watchtower inside of Electron. Okay, yeah. now but already? Yeah. Uh, now make it fit for the Lightning? Uh, for we the are writing this software um, that is going to be used by the Watchtower service, but it, it, the software itself is also already part of Electrum. So a user who is uh, technically uh, competent could actually uh, use our software to uh, deploy their own watching tower yeah. if they want. Yeah. But uh, since we do not expect lots of users to do that, we also want to provide this as a service yeah. for the majority of users. But let's say for, for the Bitcoin to take off, um, usability of the client is really important, right? Yes. So that the is. client is really accessible yeah. for a user who is not technical uh, background. Yes. So what are you going to do to make sure that, the, that, the, that it will be an iPhone effect or whatever in your wallet? that it's really natural to use it and it's really uh, low threshold to use it, easy for the user to use. Uh, we are trying to make the interface look uh, as uh, close as possible to the former Electrum interface. The Lightning functionality will not be very different. Uh, you will be using the same send and receive screens uh -huh. uh, to send and receive Bitcoins. Uh, and uh, it will just be a, a different mode of operation. There will be, of course, extra screens dedicated to lightning but you will not be uh, you will not need to interact with them all the time okay okay so what everybody wants to hear of course hey you, you mentioned about the launch of the new version of the wallet you say well i hope at the end of this year yeah i this can imagine uh, that uh, let's say the security is more important than the timing of the launch right absolutely yeah so what yeah. will be your, your procedure how to make sure that when the launch is there mm -hmm. that it's a secure wallet um which is, which is tightly knit together that no strange stuff can happen. Yeah, that's, uh, that's also difficult. I mean, we are running tests, as many tests, integration tests as possible. There are also tests of compatibility between different uh, Lightning Network clients, yeah. and we are trying to, comply, to, to comply with them. Um, but there is a component uh, of Electrum that is... Uh, Electrum is a deterministic wallet, and our user base has learned that they can always restore their, their Bitcoin from the seed, uh -huh. from the seed phrase of the yeah. wallet. This is uh, actually, Electrum was the very first wallet to introduce this feature, and our users expect that. So, um, restoring the wallet from seed is no longer possi possible with Lightning. That's something we cannot change because it's a feature of Lightning. You uh -huh. cannot, since uh, you cannot use the blockchain as, you don't, send your payments over the blockchain. So you cannot use the blockchain as a backup yeah. as we used to do. Yeah. Electrum used to have the blockchain as a backup of your wallet and this is no longer possible. Um, and of course, this is a problem of, I would not say security, but safety because uh, users might actually lose coins if they lose their data. So uh, I think 
the best way to address that is uh, we are going to provide a service that is also going to back up user data. Um, of, of course, it's going to be everything encrypted from, mm -hmm. from the user side yeah. so that we do not know. Uh, we, we do not know anything about the privacy of our users, yeah. um, but we need such a service in order to continue to have the same user experience okay. in electronic. This is also a trust issue, right? That the users trust you not to... Not to lose the data, lose of the course. Data. Yeah. 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 So, so, so finalizing this interview, right? Looking forward in the next um, yeah. three years, are there any other major releases you have on your roadmap? Uh, well, um, not yet. Uh, I mean, we have planned to uh, roll out Lightning in two different releases. There will be a first release that is uh, targeting tech-savvy users uh, who can run the Watchtower service themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so this release will uh, not include Watchtower as a service. Uh, and later on, we will po provide this uh, a more complete Lightning vers version that has more features and uh, and uh, this service will be included. Okay, yeah. yeah, for the users who are not so technical savvy, that yeah. they can use this yeah. as well, the Watchtower yeah. service. Yes, so the, we are actually trying to not be user-friendly at the beginning, because sure. we don't want uh, too many people to use exactly. this uh, when it's, it's not. It's a good test bed, yeah. right, to, yeah. to test uh, uh, the, the wallet Yes. yes. Uh, with the technical users. Currently, you can already use it, but you would need to modify the code to enable on mainnet if you, yeah. if you are uh, crazy enough to use it on mainnet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I've never used it on mainnet because I know that we are changing the spec from time to time and you would just lose your wallet whenever we change the wallet format. So don't use it on, on mainnet. Not yet. Uh, no, not yet. And when will it will that happen? When, when will that possibly be possible? Uh, that would coincide with the release, actually. Yeah. 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 So, so I, I would in say a few months, half year from now. Yeah. To be safe. Yes. Yes. All I right. Would say so. Well, mm -hmm. thanks very much, uh, Thomas, for the interview. Okay, you're and welcome. And we'll see you this evening at your introduction. Okay. Thanks. Okay, good luck.